The natural order of the Marvel Universe has been thrown into chaos. Heroes are villains, villains are heroes, and it's all going to get a lot weirder and a lot more warped from here. Let's hop into Infinity Wars issue number three and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so picking up from where the last issue left off, Gamora killed and or defeated the majority of the Avengers. She also claimed all of the Infinity Stones for herself, essentially turning her into the most powerful woman in the known universe. In fact, it would seem the only person left to actually challenge Gamora is, well, Loki. He's been working this same issue too, but from the other side, he thinks that there's more to all of these events than meet the eye. That Gamora, indeed all of them, might actually be being puppeteered by a third party. Loki chooses to showcase this by getting Gamora to look into an alternate universe, where there is indeed a Requiem causing problems for the Avengers, but she's not this universe's Requiem, it's someone else. Gamora is understandably angry, confused, dealing with an influx of godlike power, and just to really rub some salt into the wound, her dead, crappy, abusive father, Thanos, is seemingly still messing with her. She, however, does believe that she can fix everything, make it right, and because of that, she frees the heroes that she froze in time. She then goes about trying to repair order in the universe, only it backfires in a major way. You see, she ends up more or less fusing all the heroes of the Marvel Universe together, creating some sort of brand new splinter universe. And somewhere in there, Scarlet Witch is going, Pfft, I was doing that since before it was cool. This new universe is led by a group of warped Avengers, including Soldier Supreme, Steven Rogers, oh that's cute, both their names are Steve. As well as the likes of Arachnite, Weapon Hex, Ghost Panther, and oh so many more who will be getting tie-ins, be on the lookout for those. Loki, being the big fan of mischief that he is, is pretty impressed with Gamora's handiwork here. In fact, he says that her dad Thanos once wiped out half of the life in the known universe just by snapping his fingers, and now Gamora has also cut the universe in half, just did so in a more creative way. Loki says that he can be of use to Gamora, helping guide her through these new godlike powers. After all, he's a god himself. However, unlike Mephisto and her father Thanos, he won't lead her astray. This reference to Infinity Gauntlet does not endear Gamora to Loki at all. Oh, she definitely believes Loki that something might be wrong, something might actually be controlling her from afar, and that she should go to the God Garden to try and confirm this information for herself. But she's not going to be bringing Loki with her, fearing a knife in the back. Because of that, she opts to leave him behind in this new warped Marvel Universe. I should also probably note that Loki is the only one who actually knows the Earth has changed at all. He goes to the X-Mansion looking for help, but he ends up running into Diamond Patch, a fusion of Emma Frost and Wolverine. Oh, he can read your mind all right. He just prefers to stab you first before he does it. Diamond Patch believes Loki's story is true, but also believes that he's a dick and doesn't want to help him as the comic ends. So that was Infinity War issue number three, everyone. And overall, while I did enjoy the story, I couldn't help but feel like a whole other event is starting starting right here right now off the back of another. Also, who are the main characters in this story anymore? I guess it's Loki and Gamora, which is pretty unexpected. Now, as I mentioned before, there are going to be a series of tie-ins that give you a better insight into this new warped universe and the characters that inhabit it, but I think by and large, Jerry Duggan has said you don't have to read them to fully appreciate Infinity Wars. And while I'm definitely interested to see where this story is going, and I think this single issue had more than enough going for it for me to recommend it with a 7 out of 10, I am worried that this whole story could fly off the rails at any moment. Hey, there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Joel, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out some of these other videos I have available from the channel. And hey, you know what, if you're in a supportive mood, you can also check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. So until next time everyone, this has been Cave Joel, thank you so much for watching, and I will be back again next time with more comic content that smacks of greatness. Bye bye everyone.